Out of the running, Israel bars Palestinians from a marathon in the occupied West Bank at a time of heightened diplomatic tensions and stirring debate over politics and sport. This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Well, Israelis and Palestinians are involved in a running battle, this time over a marathon. The event was inaugurated last year as an expression of statehood and the Palestinians' right to free movement. But Israel has refused to allow some Palestinians to take part, denying runners in the Gaza Strip permits to travel to the occupied West Bank. Atia Abawi in Bethlehem helped set up our discussion. The second annual Palestine Marathon saw thousands of runners signing up this year, including Palestinians, internationals, and even some Israelis who were joining the right to movement cause. The race began here at the Church of the Nativity. The runners then made their way through two Palestinian refugee camps and the Al Hadr village. The runners also ran alongside the separation barrier known as a security wall by the Israelis, but seen as an apartheid wall by most Palestinians. As with many events in the West Bank and the Palestinian territories, there were challenges in organizing this event, not least of which was finding the land to accommodate the runners. In fact, they couldn't find 42 kilometers worth of land that was under Palestinian Authority control. They had to, in fact, run the race on a 22 kilometer stretch. Those doing the full marathon did two loops around. Another challenge faced was trying to get permits for Palestinians from the Gaza Strip to make their way to the West Bank. Those permits were denied by the Israeli government, including for Palestinian Olympian Nader al Masri. Many Palestinians say that these restrictions are just a symbolism of what they face on a daily basis, even when the cause is just a sporting event. Atia Bowie for Inside Story in Bethlehem. Now, as Atia mentioned there, one of those runners barred from taking part in the Palestine Marathon is the Olympic athlete Nader El Masri. Written notification of the refusal was made available by the Israeli human rights watchdog Gisha. It said at the present time, in view of the current diplomatic security situation, the entry of residents of the Gaza Strip to Israel is not allowed, except in exceptional humanitarian cases with emphasis on urgent medical cases. Now, Gisha said Israeli rules to allow Gazans to attend special events in the West Bank sponsored by the Palestinian Authority. And it said the Olympic Committee of the Palestinian Authority invited El Masri to take part. The athlete spoke to Al Jazeera about his frustrations. Honestly, I'm very sad because I couldn't take part in this race because of the occupation army and I need everyone to know that I represent Palestine in more than 50 events and I don't know why the Israelis refuse to allow me to take part despite the fact that there are so many foreigners and Arabs participating in this marathon. They are all allowed and uh, I am not allowed Nader al masri because he is from Gaza Strip. They want to put us under siege even in the sports field. So lots to talk about. Let's get started then with our guests. In Bethlehem, we have Signa Smith, co-founder of the group Right to Movement and one of the organizers of the Palestine Marathon. Joining us from Jerusalem, Ephraim Inbar, director at the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies at Bar Ilan University. And in Tel Aviv, we have Eitan Diamond, executive director of the Israeli rights group Gisha. Uh, Signa Smith, if I could start with you then, I mean, I can tell from, from what you're wearing there uh, that for the, for the runners in this particular marathon, this is a lot more than just a simple marathon, isn't it? Yes, it definitely is, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, well, today we had the second uh, Palestine Marathon. Last year we had the first one. Uh, and yes, it's, it's, uh, I don't even know where to begin. First of all, it's impossible to find 42 kilometers in, in one stretch of land. Uh, second of all, we have to coordinate between different security forces, area A, B and C. There's a wall, there's a checkpoint. Even yesterday when we were checking the route, me and my colleague, uh, we had tear gas in, uh, in our noses and mouth. So yes, this is uh, much more than, uh, than a regular marathon. 
But I, I will have to say that uh, I think uh, it's been a it's been a very very long day, uh, but it's been really really great. And and what we really would like to um, to show and to tell is the positive story. It's been an amazing day. People have been so happy. People have been working together. The police the Red Crescent Society, the Scouts, everyone had just come together and made like an amazing event for the 2,500 runners who participated today. Eitan Diamond, how do you see the political significance of this marathon then? Well, the focus for my organization is not so much on the politics, uh, the, the politics of the, the, the event, but rather our concern is about the fact that certain people uh, wanted to exercise their right to participate in the, the event. The event is conducted under the banner of the freedom of movement and people we represent based in Gaza were prevented from exercising their rights, their freedom of movement, and were prevented from participating in this event, something we find extremely distressing. But um, the Israelis, for their part, uh, the, the, in the, in the Israeli authorities say it, this event delegitimizes uh, all of this delegitimizes the race. Uh, we have the Israeli government body in charge of the permit saying that the marathon is supported uh, by the Palestinian Authority and is tainted by political shades which delegitimize the state of Israel. Is this a, is this a legitimate concern? No, not at all. The event doesn't delegitimize the state of Israel. I think the actions of the state of Israel are, the, are those that sh which delegitimize uh, Israel. The event is a sports event as, as such. It's about uh, values such as uh, fair play, mutual respect. The event, as I said before, is about freedom of movement. It's conducted under the banner of the freedom of movement. And actually, as an Israeli, I'm frankly insulted by the idea that an event promoting the human right, the basic human right, of freedom of movement is somehow considered to delegitimize Israel. I think that if Israel respects such rights, it will be promoting its own interests. Uh, I think that when Israel prevents people from exercising such basic rights, it's undermining its own interests and its legitimacy, its own legitimacy. So I would say quite the opposite of what the Israeli authorities maintained. All right, let's um, put that point then. Let's put that point then to uh, Ephraim Inba in, mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Um, now, according to Gisha, uh, the, the uh, uh, Israeli uh, human rights uh, group of which uh, Eitan Diamond uh, is a member, uh, he, he talked there about the right to free movement, which should have been a, a central uh, consideration, which Gisha says was given no weight. Um, and they go on to say it would also seem to, to run counter to the, the public statements made by uh, Israeli security officials themselves about Israel's interest in facilitating facilitating normal life for civilians in Gaza. What, what's going on here? What's your response? First of all, I think we should uh, state quite clearly that I'm also in favor of freedom of movement, but this uh, freedom of movement is not absolute. We should remember that Gaza is a territory that has been ruled since 2007 by Hamas, a terrorist organization. Gaza is at war with Israel. And I don't think that people uh, uh, from a society that it has, is at war with Israel has the right to move freely via Israel to any place. Actually, uh, there is a blockade uh, of uh, Israel on Gaza. We try to make sure that no war materials are going into Gaza. And uh, this issue was also brought before the Supreme Court of Justice. All right, well, I, I just want to, let, let me just jump Court in there for a moment. Sorry, let me just jump in there for a moment, uh, Ephraim, because uh, one of the people can who was banned, one of the Palestinians who was banned from competing in this marathon, um, uh, Nader al Masri, who we just heard from a little bit earlier, he says he has nothing to do with Hamas, which you call a terrorist uh, organization. He's just, he says he's just uh, a marathon runner and he wants to compete in this race. Why can't he? Why? I don't remember that Americans allowed uh, Nazi Germany marathons uh, runners to go into the States during World War II. Well, we're, we're I not, think it's we're ridiculous not, we're not talking about Nazi to talk Germany. about we're, freedom we're talking of, about Israel of in 2014. movement when two, societies, when two societies are at war. Apart from that, I think the Israeli security services made a case before the Supreme Court of Justice, and the Supreme Court of Justice, a no, Im important uh, in independent institution decided that the Israeli a security services have, All right, have a case. I know, As a I know, result of I know, that, I know, I'm fully satisfied I'd, I'd like not to, to allow the case, uh, what said is not security true. risks going through Israel. Okay, let's, let's get Signa's view on that first and then, and then we'll go back to uh, uh, Eitan in Tel Aviv. Okay, sorry, thank you so much. Well, um, 
I understand, of course, I'm from Denmark, I am not, I'm neither Israeli nor Palestinian, I do not know how it is to live under conflict. However, I, I don't think it's a legit argument to say that because Hamas is ruling Gaza, then people in Gaza cannot run and participate in marathons. As a runner and as a human being, uh, I don't think that argument holds any ground whatsoever. Um, I mean, you should never punish a whole population uh, because of the actions of the government. Uh, and I think it's really, really sad for everyone involved that we can't, we are at a stage right now today after, yes, you say you are at war with each other, but it's been decades and decades of occupation and you are in a place where you cannot even allow people to run together in a marathon. A marathon, it's a, po it's a positive community. You join together to run. To, it's a, the most democratic sport there is. You, you don't need much, you need your shoes. People today even ran without shoes. It's about being together in solidarity. Yes, some for right to movement, but today definitely people were just here to have fun. Because to be honest, this is their reality. They live under this. Yesterday, as I said, when there were tear gas, people just like made a sign for us that we should be careful. And they say, oh, it happens every day. They run through that wall. That's, the wall is there every day. Uh, but still, they were here today not, not to fight occupation, I think that they do that in their bare existence. But they were here to run and to have fun just as we do anywhere else in the world. And that, and that, polit that governments between two nationalities, countries, again I apologize, I am not from here. Uh, should never, should never make the people suffer. Of course, I mean, if we are in a place where we cannot even allow people to participate in runs and marathons, we definitely have a long, long right. way to go. And this is why we are here. Eitan Diamond. Yes, well, I, I couldn't agree more that uh, crushing people's hopes uh, doesn't serve security interests. Uh, since my organization actually uh, represented Mr. El Masri in the court proceedings, I'd like to point out that the Israeli authorities themselves although uh, they often rely on security arguments. I mean, security is a kind of magic word that's referred to in these kinds of cases relating to the, strict, the restriction of movement. But even the Israeli authorities, and certainly the Israeli court, didn't uh, maintain that there was a security justification in this case for preventing access. I mean, it's, it's simply it's not plausible to say that a single runner somehow poses a threat to Israel's security. And to their credit, the Israeli authorities didn't attempt to make that argument. Unfortunately, they did make other arguments to restrict uh, access for him, and they weren't very clear in the reasoning. What they were clear about was that they refused to allow him to come through, and the reasons uh, changed. Uh, so initially, they raised all sorts of technical justifications for the decision. We were able to prove that none of these actually were correct. Uh, this was accepted by the court, but the, another sort of magic word then came into play, and this is policy. The state maintained that there are some policy considerations which weren't specified, which for some reason uh, un would uh, lead to the conclusion that Israel's, Israel's policy interests would be undermined if Mr. Al-Masri would participate in the marathon. They didn't right. exactly explain but why. But Eitan, one of, one of the uh, problems... Also emerged, okay. I, I know you said mm -hmm. you're not, you're not, um, you don't want to get too much into the, the, the political aspects of this, but one of the, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this, uh, one of the mm -hmm. criticisms that's been made uh, of this event. Uh, uh, the government in Israel is saying that this is an attempt to confer some type of legitimacy on Palestine, on, on, on the Palestinians in their push uh, to, 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 become a, to become a state, and that this yeah. is being done outside the, outside the bounds of the ongoing uh, peace process. What, what do you say to that? Well, I mean, I, I think that's ridiculous. I mean, to suggest somehow that Palestinian legitimacy would be affected one way or the other because of a single marathon, I think that's just, uh, that's just ludicrous. What I would say, though, is that Israel's legitimacy isn't well served by this kind of practice. So preventing this kind of a positive event uh, an event that champions positive values. I referred before to the, the value that's sort of the, the slogan under which this whole event is taking place, the freedom of movement. I just don't see how it serves Israel's interests and Israel's legitimacy to prevent this event. It's not going to make a difference to anyone's perceptions about Palestinian legitimacy. Certainly for Palestinians, though, when even this kind of an activity, a positive activity, is prevented, uh, you know, their, their, incent their incentive to drive for an independent right. state, if anything, is promoted by the actions of Israelis in this case. Ephraim, Ephraim, uh, Ephraim Inba, aren't you concerned about the image this presents uh, of the Israeli government? Uh, and, and the fact that many people see this as a form of collective punishment I, of Palestinians. 
פרסט אוף אול, אני חושב שאין וואר זה לגר כמו לגר. אני חושב שבאמת הפלסטינים סופרים בגזה בגלל שלהם גוברמנט, אבל אני חושב שזה יהיה סטופיד על נאור פארט לאפשר אינטראקציות בין הפלסטינים בגזה ובאוסט בנק, זה יהיה נכון את נאור פארט שלנו. אנחנו לא צריכים לזכור שאנחנו צריכים לזכור שישראלים נכנסים 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 by other jihadist organizations in Gaza, and if somebody is a security risk, not should not be allowed to come into, uh, into Israel. This is a, But excuse me, this is the sovereign right of every government to allow whoever it deems that is not a security right. There is not such a thing as full freedom of movement. People, uh, governments demand visas in order to enter their countries. This argument that there is freedom, absolute freedom of action is simply not congruous with international uh, uh, rule. <laughs> All right, let's put that then to let's put that then to signal. This is this is uh, uh, this is this is all right. Okay. I, I will, we'll come to you in a, in, in a moment, Eitan. This is a form. Uh, this is Israelis are being are being shot, and this is a security measure that needs to be taken. I think it is. It's interesting that you say that you that Israeli that Israel should avoid any interaction between Palestinians in in Gaza and the West Bank. I mean that that shows quite clearly. Uh, the separation policy uh, imposed by the Israeli government. Again, this is a marathon. It's, it's a sports event. It's for boys and girls, for men and women. Every other country in the world uh, has a marathon. And, and every other country and, and nation in the world has their own story. And, and, and as I said, yes, there's a slogan called right to movement because obviously, as soon as you enter the West Bank, it is clear for everyone that there are massive restrictions on the movement of the Palestinians. But here today, again, as I said, they were here to run, to take part in a fun event. I think that should be in everyone's interest that the youth here, the next generation, get, gets a hope, gets to participate and interact with each other and with people coming from abroad. It's not about delegitimizing uh, uh, your government. It's about holding a marathon for Palestinians. And to be honest and to be quite frank, I think it's sad that you cannot say Palestine or Palestinians without having to mention Israel or the occupation. These people, they want their own story and they have their own story. But be that as it may, uh, today what I experienced was that people here, they just, they wanted a marathon and they, was, they wanted a real marathon with time registration, with chips, with start numbers. The kids here were so excited and that's why we are here. Uh, and I think it's quite... I think it's quite sad that you actually think that your government should, should prevent any interaction bet between a nation. Eitan Diamond, uh, and I know you want to respond as well to what we heard earlier in Jerusalem, that this is a necessary mm -hmm. uh, security measure on the part of Israel. Yes, well, yeah, as an international lawyer, I feel compelled to respond. I mean, I do accept that, that uh, the freedom of movement is not an absolute right. What I don't accept is that this right isn't given any weight whatsoever, and this was the case here. The right, the freedom of movement of the people we were represented, we were representing, was given absolutely no weight in the proceedings. And the security justification uh, or argument uh, may be valid in certain circumstances, but we're talking about a, a single marathon runner, that was our client, who poses absolutely no security risk for Israel. Uh, the state itself didn't maintain that he poses such a risk. And so it's irrelevant. The security argument is irrelevant. His right to movement is relevant, should have given, been given weight, and he should have been allowed to participate in this marathon. I'll also point out, as uh, the previous speaker mentioned, we're talking about movement between elements of, Palesti of Palestinian land. The West Bank and Gaza are part of one Palestinian territory. Uh, Israel is in the middle, but it's quite a different situation from one where it's just simply a matter of crossing into another country. This is a person who wants to participate in the only Palestinian marathon on Palestinian land. Ephraim, uh, in Jerusalem, uh, we've obviously seen from, from some of this discussion already that, that sport and, and, and politics uh, don't always make uh, the best of bedfellows. Is this marathon being seen as a, as a political weapon in, in, in some parts in Israel? I don't know. I think that if Palestinians in Bethlehem want to run a marathon, they are uh, welcome to do so. It's better than to prepare Uh, bombs, uh, but I would like to respond that uh, Gaza is not uh, part of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, the Palestinian Authority doesn't have effective control over Gaza, and Gaza is basically an independent entity which is at war with Israel. And it's run by a terrorist organization, and this terrorist organization is seen as such by, by most Western countries and even by Arab countries. 
therefore I think Israel has every right to put a cordon sanitaire around Gaza. But the, the, the problem, Ephraim, that people have with this is this, the, the, the whole uh, sweeping nature of the whole thing, that this is just a blanket security measure that discriminates against people who, who don't need to be discriminated against. It's not a blank uh, uh, policy, actually, Israel. Well, clearly it is, though, in the uh, case in of this marathon runner, who says he just wants to run a marathon. He says Gaza, he has nothing to do with Hamas. Stupidly supplies electricity to Gaza. And I think we are treating uh, Gazan patients. Actually, one of them that was uh, treated at an, at an Israeli hospital was telephoning and telling Hamas the defense perimeter of uh, the hospital. Uh, the Palestinians are abusing international organizations such as the Red Cross, using uh, ambulances to carry terrorists. So uh, it's not such a naive but and that, but, a simple but matter. That is I not think security matters are important. That is, the runner or the marathon but that is not related to the marathon. That has nothing to do with the Palestine marathon. Uh, you might be right, and, I, I, and I'm not doubting that there are s serious, serious security issues between your government and Hamas. But as I understood it, not al Masri, and I would like to mention that Abed al Nasser, who won the last marathon last year, he actually carried a picture of not al Masri, uh, the whole 42 kilometers, and showed it when he crossed the finish line. And to the best of my knowledge, it was not because he was a threat to Israeli security; it was because he's not a humanitarian cause, which are the only ones, the only reason that you allow people to, to exit out of Gaza and enter into the West Bank. Um, and as I said before, I don't think that any it's of your really arguments is related to a, to a marathon, a sports event. Uh, in Denmark we have marathons, I guess, I don't know, we have several and we have half marathons uh, and, and we do that for fun because we like running. Uh, and I think it's really, really sad that you insist that people, I mean, all your arguments basically um, I mean, everything you say, as I hear it, should just be an argument for that people should be allowed to run and meet each other and interact. Well, your response to that, I Ephraim, mean, you, as you said, just briefly. I think that uh, even the Israeli Supreme Court upheld the Israeli right to refuse uh, this person to cross through Israel. I think it's quite clear. And if the Supreme Court, a well-known international judicial institution uh, has uh, decided to do so, I think uh, there is a legal case and a moral case to prevent this person from crossing via Israel. Eitan? Yeah, the decision in this case was justified by the authorities on the basis of a separation policy which has a security rationale. That rationale is irrelevant to the case of the individuals in question. It's irrelevant to this event. Uh, the, subs the alternative argument that the, Isra the Israeli authorities relied on before the Israeli Supreme Court was a I was in court was a, a policy uh, argument. This was accepted by the court. It's very difficult to understand what the, what the policy justifications were, as they weren't specified. Uh, the court did express it, that it was not at ease with uh, the way that in which this decision uh, was reached, but the court has a policy of not intervening with policy considerations. We think that the policy considerations in this case are not justified. It's just difficult to understand what these could possibly be, and what it seems to be is a case where sort of petty politics between uh, Israel and the PA are having an effect on the lives of people, and the lives and rights of those people aren't factored in at all in the decision-making process. All right, and on that we've got to leave it. It's certainly been a very spirited uh, discussion, so but we are, if we, you are leave in Zderot and be we are unfortunately we are unfortunately out of time. Daily, we, uh, your I, I, I know we could go on. I know we could go on a lot longer here, but we are unfortunately out of time. I want to I want to thank all three of you uh, for taking part: Signe Smith, Ephraim Inbar, and Eitan Diamond. Thanks very much for your time. And you can always add your voice to the discussion. Your comments are always welcome, of course. Leave us your thoughts at facebook.com slash AJ Inside Story. And we're on Twitter as well. The address is at AJ Inside Story. I'm Hazem Seeker. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.